Hey everyone, this is Hurricane Howell with your Friday evening tropical update. All eyes are on Hurricane Isaias as it tracks through the Bahamas with its eyes on Florida. Let's look at the status of the storm, look at changes to the track and some possible impacts as well as comparing it to some recent storms. Let's hop right to it. Let's look at the status of this storm. It is a hurricane tracking through the Bahamas as of 8 p.m. Eastern time Friday evening. The maximum sustained winds were 80 miles an hour moving to the northwest at 15 miles an hour and it was centered 175 miles south southeast of NASA Bahamas. It was able to stay strong enough to fight off some of this wind shear and maintain itself as a category one hurricane. It became a hurricane yesterday evening which was a little bit earlier than a lot of the models were saying. Through the day today, we saw the track shift a little bit to the west. And that happened because this ridge of high pressure, the Bermuda High, was a little bit stronger than originally forecast, shifted the track a little bit to the west, and that becomes crucial because now the track is hugging right along the coast of Florida. And we're gonna look here in a moment at really what that track looks like. We have tropical storm force winds in excess of 39 miles an hour can cause widespread power, power outages and bring down a lot of trees. Those types of winds are now probable from the Space Coast south through Fort Lauderdale and the eye of the storm will be close enough to places like Palm Beach County that really it's not outside the realm of possibility that we could see hurricane force winds in places like that. We can't let our guard down. In 2016, Hurricane Matthew hugged the coast and stayed just offshore. 2019, Hurricane Dorian hugged the coast and stayed just offshore. Don't let your guard down just because we've had two storms like this in the past four years that did not make direct hits doesn't mean that Isaias will also stay offshore. We're gonna go to our first ever sand map here, and we're gonna see if this works, if I can flip the view. This is the best I could do to draw a map of Florida in the sand. And we're gonna talk about the track of Matthew in 2016 compared to Isaias right now. So let's look back at Matthew in 2016. It was a category four hurricane. It was, it was a really robust storm. It was coming in here from the Southeast. These seashells over here are Fort Lauderdale. This big clam shell is Palm Beach. When Matthew was coming in, it was a category four hurricane capable of catastrophic damage, but it was 90 miles to the east of Fort Lauderdale. So in Fort Lauderdale, you got less than two inches of rain and the maximum sustained winds were only 21 miles an hour. When it got a little bit closer to the coast here by Palm Beach. It was only about, it was about 58 miles east of Palm Beach. But again, the, the maximum sustained winds were only 29 with gusts in the 40s. You were really on the fringe. But Matthew took a sharper angle and really started coming in closer to the space coast of Florida and was able to produce a two to three foot storm surge. What was fascinating about Matthew is how closely it hugged the coast all the way up the state of Florida. Places like St. Augustine started having salt water running through the streets. We got up to really around Jack's Beach and Fern Fernandina Beach near the Florida Georgia border. Maximum sustained winds in Matthew were 34 miles an hour. But this area in Northeast Florida, Georgia and South Carolina has a concave shape and it's very sh shallow. From Matthew, you got seven feet of storm surge up there near the Georgia Florida line. Let's look at the difference here with Isaias. Isaias is coming in quite a bit closer to the coast. So in Instead of 90 miles east of Fort Lauderdale, it's only going to be 45 miles east and the winds are going to be much stronger. So remember, four years ago in Matthew, the winds were 21 miles an hour sustained. Now we're looking at the mid 40s sustained with gusts to 60s. That'll take shingles off roofs. That'll start stripping a little bit of siding. But for the most part, it's going to be a lot of down trees, I think, are possible in the Fort Lauderdale area. The real concern is when we get up by Palm Beach. The best, the best track forecast only takes the eye about eight miles east of Palm Beach. Again, we can't focus on the exact number. That could shift to the right, to the east or the west. But a, a mile only eight miles offshore or an eye only eight miles offshore, we're looking at maximum sustained winds most likely in the upper 60s. That'll cause quite a bit of damage there in Palm Beach County. And again, if the eye just shifts a little bit to the west, all of a sudden we'd have a direct strike. Hurricane force winds are possible. If it actually does make a direct strike on the coast, we could see a three to five foot storm surge. If the eye stays just offshore, storm surge I think will be more in the one to three foot range. 
In general, in Florida, as you go farther north along the coast, your storm surge potential increases. It starts getting greater in general around the Space Coast and especially in Northeast Florida. The good thing with these IS compared to Matthew, it should come in here really close to Palm Beach and Vero Beach and, uh, and Cocoa Beach, but most likely we think that it's going to then head off towards the Northeast and probably spare that concave area, extreme Northeast Florida, Georgia, and South Carolina. It's just going to, we're just going to have to um, see and take it step by step. The arrival time of tropical storm force winds. Fort Lauderdale, 8 a.m. on Saturday, getting up to the Space Coast about 8 p.m. on Saturday, and getting up into extreme northeast Florida on the Florida Georgia line about 8 a.m. on Sunday. So this is the best we could do here with a sand map tonight. Hope you enjoyed it. My name is Hurricane Hal. I'm always out here on the beaches and in communities. I love working with CNC because we're always on the scene. We like to get out there, collect data, and do a lot of data-driven flood risk and wind risk analysis. Uh, we look historically at what's happened before. That's why we like to go back and compare. Again, we should see quite a bit greater wind impacts and possibly surge impacts from Isaias than we did from Matthew four years ago. It's good to have a historical comparison so you can get an idea about your risk. Shoot me a message. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn. I'm going to be following this storm all weekend. If you have questions, if you have comments, if you can send pictures, videos, we like to be up to date with what's, ha what's happening on the ground. This is Hurricane Hal signing off. Everyone, thanks so much for sending me encouragement and questions and responses. Let's keep it interactive. Let's keep it safe and don't let your guard down. Uh, we can't watch the exact track of these storms. They can shift to the east or west. I'm really concerned seeing the track getting that close to places like Palm Beach and areas north, Jupiter, but even Fort Lauderdale, you're going to be close enough to the eye here. I think you could see some tropical storm force winds that can bring down a lot of trees. If your house is under a tree or your car is under a tree, could have damage to your property, and we could expect widespread, widespread power outages, I think, in southeast Florida moving into the day Saturday. Hey, everyone, signing off here from the beach. Everyone have a safe time, and I'll be in touch with you in the morning, and let's see how this storm shakes out. Hurricane Howell signing off.